Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be setting up our file so that we can actually get our HTML canvas working with live movement. So we want shapes to move, rotate, translate, all sorts of things like that. And we actually want to get them moving. So the way we can do this is through some clever manipulation and just some general software design. Now, the issue with Canvas is that it's inherently static. It's not meant for movement. It's meant to draw, it's meant to create shapes, but it's not actually meant to move things around. So what we can do is a clever system that allows us to refresh and redraw items constantly using some tricks for updating so that we can actually get it to look like it's moving when in reality it's just deleting and redrawing shapes over and over again extre at extremely fast speeds. So the way that this is going to work is with a loop. So effectively, it's going to draw some shapes. It's going to clear the screen, and then it's going to run a function that updates whatever. So right now, we need two main functions. We need a draw function and an update function. So let's go ahead and write those right now. And for now, we're going to leave the update function blank. And in the next video, we're going to be dealing with actually updating, tracking shapes, all sorts of stuff like that. But for now, we're just going to do a basic demonstration of how this loop works. So what we're going to do is in this function is all of the drawing that you need to do. So this imagine this as the function that is going to be creating all of the things in a certain frame of a video. It's going to be putting all the shapes in the current position that they need to be in at that moment in time. And then the update function is going to deal with how to actually get those shapes and everything that you have in the draw function to their next point in time. And then our main interval is going to bring all that together. So here we're just going to do whatever we want. Now for basic demonstration, I'm just going to be creating a rectangle in a random location on the page. So we're going to create, we're going to start by beginning a path. And then I'm going to use the fill rect function to draw it. Now this is just going to default to black since I haven't explicitly set the color. But what I'm going to do is use the math.random function to select a random number. Now this creates a random number between 0 and 1. It's a floating point decimal number. And you can actually multiply this by, what I, by whatever number you want to scale this up so that you have a random number between 0 and whatever is the number that you multiply it by. So in this case, I want a random width and a random height. So I'm going to use the canvas width. And this is going to be a random number on the x coordinate scale we have here. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the height. And I'm just going to set this to a basic 50 by 50, uh, 50 by 50 rectangle and close it off there. And then we're going to close the path. Now, this is a pretty simple demonstration, obviously, but it can get really long when you have tons of different shapes going around and you're going to have to involve loops and all sorts of stuff like that. And of course, we're going to deal with that in future videos. So for now, don't worry too much about it. Uh, but this is just a basic demonstration of what you can have. So in this case, our current slate in time is drawing a random shape in a random location around the screen. And we don't really have an update function to update it because the technical updating is done within here. But since it's totally random, we don't need to. Now, let's say we wanted to maybe track the location or move it along a specific path then we would need to track it using variables and have stuff in our update function. Again, we'll deal with that in the next video. Now, the final thing we need is the set interval function. Now, this is going to allow you to run a certain function every certain time frame in an interval forever until you clear it using a trick that I will show you. So what you can do here is use the set interval function. And then you call the actual function that you want. Now, the reason I'm not going to just directly put the draw is because I need something that is going to run all these two functions and the clearing function together. So what I'm going to do is use an anonymous function. Now, this is just an unnamed function that you can use for the purpose of exact situations like this, using it in intervals or when you're passing a function as an argument. And then our final command is the interval that you want in milliseconds. So because we want it to be going extremely fast, I'm going to set it to 10 milliseconds, although this is totally up to you and your certain situation. 
So in this function, we need to do three things. We need to clear the screen, we need to draw, and then we need to update. Now, although I said you needed to draw and then clear, keep in mind that the clearing is going to needs to take place at the beginning of the function because this is running synchronously. So if we drew it and then cleared it immediately, then it won't rerun the function again until the next interval, and you will end up with almost no time to see the drawing. In fact, there's it's virtually impossible to see the frame. So what you need to do is end on the scene being drawn so that for that interval, it's totally visible. And then just as the function loops back around, it clears it and redraws it. So it needs to be done in this order. Now, these two commands are very easy. We just replace them with our functions that we wrote up there. And in order to clear the screen, you can use a function called clear rect. ct.clear rect. And all this is, is just drawing a normal rectangle as you would here. But in this case, it's going to create a rectangle in which everything inside it will be totally deleted. So because we want this to be the entire canvas, we start at 0, 0, the upper left corner, and then use the c.width and c.height properties to select a rectangle that represents the entire canvas. So now if we save it, you can see that we have a very fast moving black rectangle jumping around our screen here. So if we slow it down, you can see that that goes much slower and you can adjust the speed that you want your animation to progress at here. Now, the last thing I want to cover is actually stopping this interval. Now, for in most cases, you won't really need to stop it, but it's just important to know in case it applies to a very specific situation. So this function actually returns a number when it's called, and this number can be passed to another function called clear interval, which can be used to stop the loop. So what we can do is set is set a variable to the return of this function. So I can say var clear set interval, and this is going to store the number that we need. And then all we have to do is if we go to the console and I wanted to stop the loop, is use the clear interval function and then pass that number that represent it, which in this case is clearer. And when we do that, you can see that the loop stops. Now again, the chances that you will need to do this is very low unless you're trying to move to a more a specific interval that you want, switch between loops, whatever your case may be, but it's just good to know that you can stop this loop at some point. So that's the refresh cycle that we need. We have a draw function, which draws everything in its current state and time, an update function that will deal with actually progressing the animation or your movement along, and then we have one grand set interval that clears the screen and sets up a loop for it to look like movement. All right.